咁啊，大家歡迎咧，就睇到咧呢個 Toys TV 啦。咁今日咧，我同阿 David 咧，我哋兩個咧就有幸請到啊，潮玩界嘅教父 Ron English 咧去接受我哋一個訪問嘅。Our Godmaster， Godfather， Our Godfather， 啊，誒 ，Hi Ron， Hello， Hi， 誒。Basically, yeah, we would like to. Uh, this is our honor to have you to do an interview with us. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, we have uh, some questions. Uh, would like to ask, uh, especially uh, focus on uh, this uh, exhibition. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we would like to know that uh, what's the uh, goal and uh, why would you uh, have this uh, exhibition this time? Okay. Um, well, the the exhibition is called English Translations. So I'm in China, and I'm mm. yeah. So. We have to do a little translating, but it's also playing with the idea of you know lost in translation or like if if somebody translated the book and a book's like very poetic, so you have to well the, it won't translate. Yes, it won't translate word to word. So you ah. so the other person has to be a poet on the other end of it too. To and understand then, it. Yeah, and then so it, there's like three parts to the exhibition. So one part is um well the story kind of started last year when um i was with md of uh yes. md young of uh pop life and um he was uh we were at an auction and he, he bought like a a basquiat for um a client in china yes. and then um and then then i bought a bank scene said oh i'm gonna paint over it because you know all the press was there and stuff yeah. and then um his client says oh well then i want him to paint over the basquiat too i'll pay him to come you know to china and paint over the basquiat now I can paint over a Banksy because it's a stencil. It, it was put on the streets. It was not only intended to be up for a couple of weeks yeah. and washed away in the rain yeah. or whatever happens. So that's 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 one thing, you know. And maybe it titillates people or you know whatever. It, but it's it's a stencil. He still has the stencil. Yeah. The other thing is it's a it's an artist who's deceased. He's not going to make any more work. So it would be a violation to go over his work. But I was still intrigued by the idea. So I thought, how can I? Because my idea sometimes is to make. I want to make somebody happy or intrigue them, but not necessarily do what what they ask me to do. So it kind of inspired this show where I I remembered like all the Basquiat's that I saw like in the 80s, yes. and and I misremember things. You know, my brain changes them. You know, it changes the brush strokes into flames or something or fire, or, and so like I reinterpreted them kind of in the weird way I remembered them without seeing like the old paintings. So in a way, they're these these really. Bad translations or good translations, but it's been filtered through my mind for 30 years, and then it comes back out as what I remember it, which in the end doesn't look anything like the original. So it was kind it of a your own, your yeah, own yeah, yeah. So I thought that I was very intrigued by the idea of this, and I was actually very pleased with the outcome of this. So I um, mean, you know, if the sold ch sold out before it even opened, so I guess other people were intrigued by <laughs> the idea too. Yeah, yeah, and then um. I've always liked, uh, you know, Six Flags and Disneyland and stuff, and I liked immersive type of art experiences that were for everybody. And uh, so I think the second half of the show is so kind of more about amusement parks. So you have, you know, your high fine art, and then you have your amusement park. So you kind of have a blend of the both. Yes. And then the third element that I presented is um, I have all my own characters. So like you'll see a lot of my own characters, and some some characters I have are like serial killers. So they're they're derivative characters. They're um, they're parodies of other characters. And then I have a whole new set of characters that that are the characters of Delusionville, and they're standalone characters that aren't parodying another character. But they, there's no TV show about them, or you know what I mean. Yeah. So what I did is I created uh, three rock operas about these characters, and hired voice actors and rock opera singers and different people to play the different characters, so that you can, you know, so the fans can start to understand, you know, who these characters are. Like they see them visually, and maybe they're intrigued visually, but it also kind of infuses a personality into them. It's very standalone yeah. characters. Yeah. And it's also, um, I don't think it's a very common thing. You know, I think. Artists always like to do something that really nobody's ever done. Um, I had a friend that was a famous rock star, and he decided to become an artist. And then he called me every like 20 minutes, going, "I just had this idea. Has anybody ever done this?" Because yeah, he wanted to have a new coming. idea. You know, he didn't want to have an idea and then find out somebody already did it. So I don't think that anybody's ever created characters for a, uh, a, a exhibition, then wrote three op rock operas or created like a soundtrack for the show. So that seems something very new to try out here. So that's what those are the three elements of this show. Ah, uh -huh. so Ron, uh, so is it the first time you come to uh, Shenzhen? Um, I passed through, but I've never exhibited or done anything here. Ah, uh, yeah. I see. So, uh, what do you feel about uh, this city, and also uh, what do you see about the uh, people 
in Hong Kong uh, and China who like your art. Uh, right. What do you feel about the market here? Well, I've been coming to China on a regular basis for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and I've been working with Pop Life for about the same amount of time. And I think MD's uh, the the owner of Pop Life has been here about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we traveled a lot. We did a lot of publicity, a lot of tours, without actually ever having any shows for a long time before we finally started having exhibitions. It felt like we were ready. We understood the environment. But I think, you know, I feel like that throughout history, the center of the world's always changed. So, like for art, it was Paris. Yeah. And then after the Second World War, it moved to the New York City. Oh, and, shit and from time to yeah. time. Yeah, and I feel like that, then it went to London for a minute, like with the beginning of street art. But now I feel like that I've refound the new center of art and where the new energy is at. Uh -huh. So that's one of the big reasons we picked this town. We just, it felt like where everything was kind of coming together. Do you no. know what I mean? More, more energetic here, right? Yeah, and well, the, the, the vibe and the attitude is very positive and it, very excitement and, and people don't seem to be um, jaded or like I've seen that or I'm bored or do you know what I mean? They seem like they're genuinely experiencing the art mm -hmm. and the music and, um, and having a good time, which is what it's really all about, you know? Yeah. So do you think the um, Hong Kong or the Asian market to uh, the fans it more growing every year of uh, your fans fans base yeah i think it's it's growing exponentially every year i'm getting more and more known here um you know it's a whole different country so it's a different process of getting known um, we put a lot of years into working on it um, but you know at the same time i'm part of this uh vinyl art toy world yes. and you know the vinyl art toy world began in hong kong you know with eric so and uh my favorite michael lao so yes. So, you know, then it, 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 it came from here and then it got exported to the United States and now I'm kind of bringing it back here again, you know, from the United States version, but... Uh, it's but like really, passing you know, the torch, right? <laughs> yeah, like, like um, if, you know, like I, I, uh, I collaborated with uh, Sholu, like, um, and so we just presented the toy yesterday, but like I think if I really had like a fantasy person I'd collaborate, it would be Michael Lau because he is like really the godfather yes of this movement and I think that would that would be historically important if we did something together you know and um, how you see them um, is there any more uh, inspiration from Asia markets like um, the culture it gives you more more um, ideas with, uh, like in the future mm. well, I think that um, I think the idea with Asia now is to think big and think long term so and that's the way I've always liked to think you know what I mean so like create things that are going to create positive posit positive energy like into generations not just like in a small cycle you know what i mean yes. and so, the, and the, like the maybe the china the culture shock for you maybe is do you, you do what um investigate more to to get more ideas out well i think it's just it's 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 you know building high speed rails and, and building big infrastructure and really planning for the next hundred years you know <laughs> so i mean w even with me it's like why did i make delusionville you know i was probably having one of the greatest art careers in the history of the world doing the parody stuff of other characters because people already know the other characters but then i realized you know i have kids and um that they wouldn't they couldn't really do that and they couldn't you know all my paintings would be sold so they really wouldn't have a stockpile of paintings to sell and it would be kind of a dead end but if i owned like a hundred or two hundred you know unique characters are completely developed and embraced then they don't really need me anymore yes. and, and it's kind of interesting now because in a way like um you know a lot of my clothing is designed by other people because they have i create all the elements and then they refigure the elements into stuff and and it, so I, I wanted to build something that would could go generations you know so like after i'm gone there could be amusement parks around the world or there could be cartoons or there would be a million ways that you could exploit this this concept you know and it wouldn't just die with me so, so uh so that's a very chinese way of thinking now of you know because right now i mean i'm not criticizing my country but right now we we, we do in these little four-year loops where the the, the, ne the next person comes in and destroys everything the person before him did because they want their their yeah, idea and their credit yeah. yeah so nobody's thinking strategically yes. long term anymore you know that's more yeah. your 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 thought is more chinese chinese um, yeah, thinking yeah, yes yeah so like uh among all your creation and uh, characters and artworks uh do you have any specific things your is your favorite like a favorite characters or favorite artwork 
Well, the, the uh, character that I used to represent myself is Ronnie Rabbit. Oh. Um, he's mm -hmm. a space alien. Mm -hmm. um, he has a right brain, a left brain, and he has mm -hmm. a middle brain. Because mm -hmm. I always thought, you know, like, if, if, if you just have, if you lose one side of your lobe, you, you're not be able to do a lot of stuff. Like, if you lose this side, you can't speak. If you lose this side, you can't... Oh, you that's know. the idea. <laughs> yeah. But what if there was a, a, a third lobe, mm -hmm. and it would have concepts that these other two couldn't have, and it could do things these other couldn't have? Ah. So it kind of gives him another depth into the universe, like, with his middle brain. I see. But he's also um, an artist, and he's also kind of neurotic like me. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and, and sometimes I feel like I'm from another planet, so and, <laughs> and he actually is from another planet. So. <laughs> cool. And... Um, because you have been to um, been as an artist for whole, so many years, like all, and during those years you have create um uh, a little um uh, uh, billboards art mm -hmm. um uh, and, and, uh, drawing arts mm -hmm. drawing uh, yeah and uh, toys mm -hmm. music videos mm -hmm. which area is your favorite? Um, you know I like them all. Um, if you think about it, if if you get tired of something then you have something else to go to you know what I mean so you kind of, kind of cycle through one thing and I move to the next thing so if I get tired of being in the studio then I get to go out and do billboards or murals or something you know and then if I feel like I'm too much out there and I'm tired of being out there then I could go back and quietly go to my studio and work or I could go to the recording studio and start creating music so because I have all these different kinds of ideas and you can't really express <coughs> like music is very um, emotional and art's very intellectual so like if i really want to present something emotional i think it's more it's better to present it in a musical form than an artistic form you know because um, recently I, I watched again your your movie um the art and the crime yeah um i think it's about um during the 80s you you have a lot of uh, billboard posters right. and um how is it a uh, um, um that time is a main goal to put up those um, posters well you know I think I think I think that I've never planned you know my life um, I think there's always a zeitgeist so weirdly um, when I moved to Texas you know I, I, I kind of saw the billboards but I hadn't done anything with them yet but um, I took a photography class and then I started uh, I learned how to trick perspective like by doing stuff in the environment so I did that for a while and then I didn't understand that there was a movement brewing in New York called fabricated to be photographed and so then I was kind of lumped into that movement, but I didn't. I didn't do that to be a, that work to be a part of the movement. I just did it, you know, for my own self, you know, independently. Which also means that there's a zeitgeist. That means a lot of people are kind of having the same concept. Just have yeah, uh, like a similar concept later happened yeah. with film, where you you can't light anything or whatever. It was called dogma. But um, so like if I'm just only going to take a photograph, and then if I want weird stuff like the perspective to be backwards or some guy to be sitting at a table in his head to to look like it's 50 feet back or something, I had to create that in the environment. So it was a challenge. Um, and also I tried to like it make it make it more interactive in, in different weird situations. So it created like um, a situation where I would have to work in the studio, and then a situation where I would have to go out into an environment and interact with real people. And sometimes they wanted to shoot me or whatever. Yes. And um, but then also, if everything in this environment has to mat be a part of this picture in the way I want it to be, like the first time I shot a picture that had a big billboard in the background, well, I didn't want that billboard to say Budweiser. I wanted that to relate to the picture. So I had all these like weird bums in the front. So I paid at them like it was an ad for them, like yes. were the bums or whatever. And uh, so I had to repaint the billboard. And then I, I, I kept finding these locations that had billboards. So I'd repaint the billboard to be a part of my picture because of, you know, the fabricated to be photographed dogma thing, you know. Well, a bunch of other artists saw me doing that. Now, they were young painters and they were frustrated because, you know, back then, it, it's before Keith Haring and Kenny Scharf and they, you know, the young kids really made it. You, you weren't really going to have a show till you were 30, you know? So, like, if you're 19 and you're full of energy and you're making art and you're going to think, really, I'm going to wait 10 years? I mean, that's a long time to yeah. a 19-year-old to get to have a show and have people see my art. And then they thought, you just circumvented the system. So I wasn't thinking of doing the billboards, you know, to show off like in the environment i was thinking of doing the billboards you know t in service of my photography um they saw it as like you just found show a way to, to show off our art you know and and you know a lot of people think that was the moment that was the inception of street art because at the same time in new york people were writing their names on the trains and they were doing it stylistically oh, yes. but that that's a that's a whole different thing because they were trying to gain fame yes you know and uh, i wasn't I was anonymous. I was, you know, so you just put so it was pure. It was pure art. Yes, yeah. Yes. So, so 
to a lot of people, I think that's the inception of like the idea of street art, where you're just anonymously putting art for people to experience or stumble upon and have a different kind of relationship to it because they don't know why it's there or they don't know why it's that they don't know if the billboard com company made that or why why on earth would they make something that was making fun of one of their products or so it created a weird confusion where you didn't understand what was going on and you, you need a big thought for yeah to look right at yeah. yeah no it was interesting once i was hitchhiking from austin to dallas and uh and i used to make these really big beautiful colorful signs that said where i wanted to go yeah. and then you know the guy picked me up because i never pick up hitchhikers <laughs> But it's like, man, this sign is so beautiful. I thought, I got to know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're driving along. We're talking about this and that. Well, it turns out he's a truck driver in Dallas for a living. And then he goes, you know, you know, we, we talked about a bunch of stuff. You know, it's a long drive. Um, and then he started got on the thing. Is you know, I drive around Dallas, and I don't know what. I see these weird billboards everywhere, and I can't figure out like they're making fun of advertisements or just weird things. And it's like, who, who's paying for that or? It just, you know, it's like this, it's floating around my head and it won't land. So many questions. It won't land. And yeah. it just, it just drives me crazy. And I thought, oh my God, you just picked up the guy that does those. It's like, I just steal them. So and did he, you tell him? Yeah, yeah. And okay. he was like, oh, now it all makes sense. Because like, why would, you know, they, why would p people make fun to make fun of other products or their own product or, and then it all made sense to him. And he was super happy because he felt like, oh, that was just like, I could not let all, that all, thought all land himself, in my head. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But it was fun that he was like, he really had to think about who would do that and why would they do that? And it also makes you think about like who, you know, who can advertise and you know, and what can you advertise? And so it makes you question a lot of things, the, the idea of doing that. So I was kind of intrigued by that. I, I love those. Yeah. I love those history. But you, you know, it's like, then that the, I don't know, then the, just things change. And, and I remember like when I was younger and I was doing all the billboards and the illegal stuff, I said, you know, if, if the world ever changes and embraces what I'm doing, and gives me big walls and doesn't try to throw me in jail, you know, I'm going to quit doing illegal stuff and I'm going to be a part of the system, you know? And then it took me a while to realize it's like, you know, everybody's offering you walls everywhere and everybody wants you to do this now. Um, so finally, I, I remembered that I told myself that, you know, you're not going to do illegal stuff anymore if the world changes and lets you do this stuff. So at some point I had to quit yeah. doing the illegal stuff. Now, it's it's great to do illegal stuff because you can do it whatever you want whenever you want it and you don't have to negotiate with anybody you know what i mean so it's a whole different trip trying to negotiate with you know the town council and different stuff so well, so sometimes i miss you know just doing whatever i felt like when course, i felt yeah. like it but uh we, we yeah. missed it too <laughs> yeah 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 hey ron we have uh, one last question to you yeah. and uh, i asked it for many of your fans because like uh you know in uh in uh, asia uh many of our artists actually is a late light sleeper they wake up late and they sleep late like so oh yeah are you oh no i'm not a rock star uh -huh. i i get up around sometimes i get around like five in the morning okay i'm um, usually i try to get bright when the sun comes up mm -hmm. so because i love that beautiful morning light to paint oh. and uh, i treat it like it's a job oh. you know no i met um i remember like uh, one of the old graffiti guys like uh, there was a lot of them ah. and only a few of them really made it do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh and one of the guys that kind of made it i said what's the difference between you and the other guys mm -hmm. and he goes I have an alarm clock, <laughs> you know, and that's about it. You know, I'm not more talented than them. I just figured this is a business. I'm going to wake up in the morning and get it done. So, so yeah. cool. So, uh, uh, thank, you so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much yeah. for give, uh, sparing yeah. your time with us. Come mm -hmm. on. Toys TV 嘅朋友觀眾，咁啊今日咧，我哋咧非常之啊啊榮幸咧，咁啊啊我哋嘅大師 Ron English 咧，咁啊接受咗我哋嘅訪問啦，同埋分享咗好多資料俾我。冇錯，咁啊之後嘅日子，我哋咧亦都會有更加多嘅訪問嘅，咁可以再見到你哋啦。好啦，拜拜。You are watching Toys TV.